Alternative Dig Talk. Real Issues. Real Talk. Hi Rogers, can I ask you something? Uh, shoot. What does corruption mean? Well, summarily, corruption is abuse of public power for personal gain or for the benefit of a group to which one owes allegiance. For example, when a public office is abused by an official accepting or soliciting a bribe. By the way, private people can be corrupt too, like bribing police officers to escape fines. Mm, okay, so exactly how does that concern me? <laughs> well, do you pay taxes? I guess, yeah. What does that have to do with this? Everything. Because those taxes you pay are supposed to facilitate services you use, like water, electricity, roads construction, medicines in hospitals, name it. Hmm. Okay, that is much bigger than I thought. But it can be stopped, right? Well, yes it can. Although it may not be as easy as it sounds. And here is the reason why. Corruption roots are grounded in our country's social, political, economic, bureaucratic traditions and policies. So, what has kept it going this long? I mean, why don't we stop it? Well, the main reason why it has been here for so long is because institutions are weak. Either as a result of poorly defined ethical standards of public service, weak administrative and financial systems, or ineffective watchdog agencies. Hmm. What can we do to stop it? Um, at a national level, we must focus on strengthening the independence and effectiveness of public institutions that fight corruption. At a personal level, we must commit to never giving a bribe. I promise I'll never give a bribe. Well, that's a great decision you have made. Me and you now have to spread this message to all our friends. If we all do our part, corruption will be no more. This message is brought to you by Alternative Digitalk. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. It is 12 noon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Interface Show. My name is Edgar Matthew Karahanga, and this is Digitalk TV. Every Friday, starting from 12 midday to 2 p.m., we host uh, retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Vesija right here to try to touch base on what is happening in the Pearl of Africa, what is happening in Uganda, and of course, what is happening globally. Uh, we try to, you know, cite out some issues there and, of course, uh, deliberate on them to try to create constructive, you know, journalism and at the end of the day to create a country that is better uh, for each and every one of us. Thank you so much for tuning in for yet another insightful and exciting edition of the Interface Show. This week, um, has, uh, you, you know, had a lot of um, information, a lot of news. Uh, we shall start off from uh, uh, Gulu, uh, where we saw uh, General Mbadi Wilson handing over to uh, the new CDF, that is the Chief of Defense Forces, that is Mohozika in Erugaba, uh, that was uh, yesterday. Uh, we had him handing over uh, to uh, that general right there. And of course, many things were said there. And this comes at a time when many Ugandans has be, have been speculating uh, that um, Hosika in Erugaba should be coming uh, for presidency. Is this um, a rubber stamp or is this a roadmap uh, that clears up a way for uh, the tweeting general to be able to uh, be at the helm of this country? We'll be talking about that. And of course, the Electoral Commission, uh, through uh, their chairperson, came out to show or to claim that uh, the money is not enough that was allocated to them. Now, this comes at a time when Uganda is preparing for uh, the general elections come 2026. And prior to that, we had the Electoral Commission uh, requesting for over 1.1 trillion shillings that will be helping uh, in, uh, you know, um, organizing free and fair elections this time round. Now, as we speak, the Electoral Commission has over uh, 700 billion, but they say uh, this is not enough if they are uh, to, you know, have uh, very feasible elections at the end of the day. And now, uh, as uh, these uh, disturbances are coming up, 
remember the LC1 and LC2 plus the women councillors, um, the elections that were supposed to be held last year have not been held up to today. They've been postponing them. And uh, I don't know what this really means uh, to Uganda. And then uh, we had the National Unity Platform delegation go to Buganda, uh, specifically to the Katikiro of Buganda, uh, to try to have a visit there as uh, we prepare for the Kabaka birthday run that normally happens in April. And uh, according to the Katikiro, uh, the National Unity Platform needs to reconcile and forge a way forward at the end of the day because uh, they are young people and there is a vision uh, that uh, they should be achieving as uh, the leading opposition party in Parliament or Uganda's Parliament. Now, it is very ironical to inform you that a day after that, we saw a letter coming out from the president of the National Unity Platform, that is Robert uh, Chagulani Center Mu, suspending uh, the, the Mr. Mathias Mpuga, who is a member of parliament, former leader of opposition, but also a commission at parliament. And uh, they were suspending him from the role uh, of a uh, commissioner of parliament. And they say this is because of that um, were raised against this gentleman after him. And the entire parliamentary commission allocated themselves sums of uh, Ugandan taxpayers' money that um, uh, accounted or accumulated up to 1.7 billion. And the national platform has been candid about this. Uh, many people have said this is bringing uh, about a divisionism in the opposition. And of course, we've seen uh, wrangles and factions happening in the national platform. We shall be also hinting about that. And of course, uh, lastly, but definitely not least, we celebrate a new president, Africa's youngest president, 44-year-old Basiru Ndomaye Faye, has been sworn, has been elected, is the president-elect of uh, uh, the Republic of Senegal. Now, this comes at a time when uh, Ahmed Sonko, or Osman Sonko, who was uh, uh, supposed to, uh, you know, uh, be one of the leading opposition candidates in that part of uh, the world, uh, being incarcerated and imprisoned, which uh, led to a lot of protests, many people dying, but later, uh, we've seen that uh, their person that they believed in, Faye, has been elected uh, president of Senegal. Now, many people think uh, that th many people have seen this as um, a surprise because it's not every day uh, that you find um, a change of government, peaceful change of government, with uh, the sitting president accepting and uh, the political players all accepting that uh, some other person has won the election and the country really moving on and uh, seeing handshakes between the two. So, uh, it is something that you can say uh, has put put Africa and Senegal in the spotlight, and we may think, or we can say, that uh, the democracy in Africa is uh, going uh, somewhere. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is uh, just a few of the snippets of the news that we've been having throughout the week. But allow me to welcome retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Vesija, because he's already here with us. Feel free to send in some of your messages or comments uh, through our comment section at Alternate Uganda, that is on Facebook, at Digitalk TV, still on Facebook, on Twitter, we are at Alternative Yuga, uh, so you can send your message there, I'll be reading them subsequently as we continue with the program. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, good afternoon, and uh, Doctor, you are most welcome, it's always a privilege and humbling to have you right here on Digitalk TV. Thank you very much, uh, Edgar, and um, a very good afternoon to all our digital audience, wherever you are joining us from, on this uh, interface talk show that happens every Friday from midday. Uh, it's always a great pleasure to be here, and I hope you've had a good week. And uh, yeah, uh, times are very challenging. Uh, it's been a long drought in the country. The temperatures continue to soar. Part of what uh, is a, a sign of our mismanagement of the environment. And uh, so we can uh, prepare for hard times uh, with uh, food becoming scarce. Welcome to today's Interface Show. Okay. Uh, doctor, before we even delve into the discussion of what is happening in Senegal or the peaceful transition that has been seen here, I want to start off on rather a note by one of our viewers here who requested that you talk about the plight of uh, the road uh, cleaners. These people have um, striked now, this is the second time, or demonstrated, showing their 
uh, you know, grievances. Uh, they receive a pay of uh, not more than 150,000 per month, but they have not received this remuneration for the l last six months. And uh, they came out the first time, protested, walked to parliament, and uh, Speaker Anita Monk spoke to them and assured, the, or assured them that they were to get their remunerations very soon. Uh, time has gone down the road, they have not received the remunerations. They are back on the streets saying there's something that needs to be done. Doctor, what do you think about the plight of these people? Well, you see, it's not just uh, the people who work for KCC that uh, are in trouble. Uh, there are many people who are not receiving their pay. Mm. And uh, it's uh, really very worrying. Uh, how you expect mm. thousands of people that live literally hand to mouth because if you are earning a hundred and fifty thousand or even three hundred thousand mm. uh, shillings in a month and you have to pay your rent you have to pay for your food you are, have a family to look after you have transportation costs, mm. you have health care costs, you have, there is absolutely no way um, you can spread this little money, even when it comes on time to cover these costs. So when it doesn't come at all, mm. I mean, it's, a, it's an unbelievable crisis that goes on in the lives of, of all these uh, uh, you know, many, many people, and most of them are women fending for their families. Yes. Most of them single moms because the men have long <laughs> run away <Of> course, yes. <laughs> from their responsibilities. Yeah. So it's, it's really very, very sad and, um, and um, you know, annoying that uh, you can have this kind of a situation, not because there is no money to pay them, mm. but because we have totally different priorities. Because the money is even small, you would yeah, say. It's small, small or big, it is budgeted. So there is money that is budgeted for these activities. But because we run, obviously, a cash economy, mm. They distribute what is collected by the revenue authority, which is in itself uh, challenged because they expect revenue authority to collect much more than it can collect. Mm. In fact, uh, I have uh, been seeing on social media already that the traders, the business community, yes. is also raging mm. and may be beginning a protest on the 8th of April mm. and I support them you know yeah. because the tax burden in this country is crazy and killing businesses you are killing the the, 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 the chicken that lays the eggs mm. you know so on the one hand there is huge taxation and I have had a lot of time to talk about this in my previous campaigns that, uh, you know, it's totally misdirected because if you want greater revenue, you don't have to raise taxes uh, because there won't be consumers. Mm. <laughs> taxes are paid by consumers. Yeah. So the, the people who would be consuming and therefore paying taxes are these people you are not paying their salaries. Mm. <laughs> so they cannot consume. So you cannot raise tax. Uh, and, and then they try to put taxes higher for the few that are raising the tax. And, and, and the crisis continues. So this is, I think, an example of a complete failure of management of an economy and the state by the um, 70 June time. Aren't you exaggerating by the use of failure? Well... Call it another word. I, 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 that's, in fact, as a polite uh, a description as I can find. Mm. Because, you know, so uh, you, you have, and I said the problem is mm. misplaced.
priorities. Because while these uh, thousands of workers who earn little and it's not paid is going on like that, money is being paid to areas that one would not expect. You know, we've been seeing the opulent expenditure in parliament. You know, the opulent expenditure in the state house. Unbelievable expenditure that goes on daily in the state house. The opulent expenditure, you, you've seen, you know, the uh, there was a, you know, thousands upon thousands of people invited to feast in Kololo or on public funds. Why you are not paying your statutory, mandatory obligations? A salary is mandatory. It's not, so it, it should not bargain for priority mm. with other expenses. You must first pay what you owe before you consider other expenditure. That's not the case. It's the, so this is... They're a, not the only government employees that have uh, taken a while without receiving payment. Precisely. That's what I, so that's one what would say I started pointing out. It's not really about out. them. It's that's, just about how a country is struggling, where a government is struggling financially. That it's not struggling. It's not a struggle for or resources. It's a question of how the resources are allocated. I'm telling you that mm. in... Uh, uh, ordinary situations, yes, you don't spend anything before you pay your obligations, which is your salaries, which is even your debts, because the unpaid debts in this country of people who supplied to government goods or services and are not paid year upon year, year upon year, who have been also driven out of business because they haven't been paid. Uh, and yet they have to keep on uh, running their business, paying rent, paying workers, paying this, when they delivered to government and the government didn't pay them. So these should be the priorities that are not followed. Instead, the priority is the opulent expenditure of Mr. Museveni. State house where he stays, it's not the office, it's not the work of the people of Uganda, actually. It is his donations to, 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 to buy support, uh, you know, like you see, paying politicians and uh, so on, that is priority number one. And that uh, is uh, not only disgusting, but it's really criminal. It's criminal to treat citizens like that. But uh, again, you come back to the same old question, mm -hmm. what do you do? Because they are the Alpha and Omega. Nobody can intervene. Who would intervene? The people that should intervene on behalf of those uh, people mm -hmm. are their representatives who themselves are a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a conspiracy of the elite to live in comfort at the expense of the population. Mm -hmm. And that's why I have said time over and over again that the solution for this is for that population to turn the tables. You're meaning demonstration. To turn, like that, to turn the tables whichever way. I don't know whether you've ever seen mm. this, uh, uh, you know, picture that, you know, depicts the situation of citizens carrying their leaders. Yes, where you I have see, seen it. You see all these people bent, mm. of course, emanciated and bent. Yes with a table sitting on top of them and the leaders with their chairs seated on top of that table enjoying a feast, you know, sharing chicken and so on on top of these citizens that are carrying them. And it says all it takes is for these citizens to stand up mm. 
and the table falls. <laughs> and then they can, they can have their, their share of what they deserve in their country. So people must stand up firmly and say enough is enough. Uh, I, 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 lining up uh, before a speaker of parliament mm. uh, who uh, uh, is heading an institution that is uh, totally corrupt is <laughs> is you know is a contradiction. It's a it's a contradiction in terms. It's a waste of time uh, uh, spending time to you know to walk to a place which is part of your problem. That, that's to, where they to have seek to go. For, to seek for a solution where your problem lies <laughs> is, is a contradiction in terms. Mm. So, but anyway, mm. uh, uh, I, I uh, must express my, um, you know, sympathy to not only the KCCA workers. And, and this is partly, you know, I, I have been arguing with uh, my brother Mulodi, mm. the Lord, the elected leader of mm. Kampala, who has no power. You know, <laughs> all this is going on. These are his people. Mm. You know, they cry to him, but yeah. he, he says, he now, what, what can I do? Because his hands okay. are tied at the back. Mm. And, and so the question is, so... I, I wonder what that office there for, you know, is <laughs> doing. to do, you know. Mm. Uh, this is why we must focus really on a revolution okay. in this country. Okay, um, that is retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Besija. 21 minutes past 12 midday, we are still watching, you're still watching the interface show. It runs from now up to 2 p.m. Let's, let's go to, to Senegal, uh, Doctor. You have been there. Uh, recently, and uh, you're one of the people who went to actually try to check in on the Osman Sonkos and his colleagues who were incarcerated. A few weeks down the road, um, they were released, and the, the country went to the polls. As we speak today, uh, the colleague uh, that you'd say was supported by Sonko, who is uh, uh, Basiru, Basai, Basiru uh, Faye. What, what do you think about this young person, 44 years, taking power and the revolution that is just happening in Senegal? You, you see, the, the thing is, the people of Africa must have great lessons to learn from Senegal. Mm. Um, and, and the greatest lesson of which is that people get what they uh, fight for. Mm. They don't get what they de deserve. You know, people, mm. citizens will never get what they deserve. They get what they fight for. Yes. It is, and, and it's, it's not just citizens. It's everywhere. You know, mm. it, it's said that in business, you don't get what you uh, deserve. You mm. get what you bargain for, yes. you know. Mm. So even for citizens, you really get what you fight for. Mm. You bargain for, if you like. And um, uh, the people of Senegal have been demonstrating that. Not just against this, uh, uh, you know, fellow uh, President uh, Macky Sall. Mm. In fact, there was a big struggle to bring Macky Sall into office itself. Mm. Not just Macky Sall, there was a big struggle to bring uh, Abdullahi Wad, whom Macky Sall replaced. Mm. And Abdullahi Wad later on turned around and wanted to uh, stay firm in the chair, wanted to amend the constitution, wanted to do all other terrible things. The people came back and said, of our dead bodies, we did not bring you to do that. And they fought with Abdullahi Wad until they threw him out mm. and brought Makisar. Makisar. Mm. Makisar started exactly the same antiques mm. as, uh, as Abdullahi Wad. He wanted to extend himself. Uh, people fought and fought and that, and many died. Of course. Because people here think that maybe because there, uh, there is no military ruler there that things uh, were easier. No. Hmm. It, it took a lot of fight. There are still many that are incarcerated today. To, uh, yes, I believe they will be released, released after yeah. the swearing mm. in on, on mm. Tuesday. On, on, I think it will be on Tuesday. Mm. Um, so uh, the people 
have fought for the changes they need in Senegal. Continuously, it's not as it's not a one-off. Mm. Even so, what what it demonstrates is that even when you fight for a leader to come to office, and that leader gets there, don't go back and sleep. Because what it has shown is that indeed people should be expected to be selfish and to be greedy. Mm -hmm. That should be the expectation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that every leader will be selfish and greedy. What you, their, their uh, employer, you, the one who gives them the, the job to work for you, it's incumbent upon you, the population, to make sure that this greedy leader does not steal from you or misuse your own resources. You must be vigilant continuously to make sure that they are serving you as they should. And when they start uh, faltering that you are on them, you hold them firmly and say, no, 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 we will not allow you to do that. And that's what the people of Senegal have been demonstrating. Uh, in fact, Senegal has never had a military government. Yeah. And I think in part because their people are militant. <laughs> mm -hmm. They don't allow people to joke too. around with, the, with their rights, with their freedoms, with their power. They fight for it continuously. And um, the other element which uh, I think one needs to take note of in the Senegal situation mm. is uh, the struggle of the state institutions. Because all these leaders try to capture all state institutions so that they serve them. Mm. They answer their, their wishes. And we've seen in Senegal that uh, the state institutions have fought also to remain uh, independent. Mm. Not entirely, but they have fought. So the judiciary, for example, has uh, taken stand that uh, is definitely laudable. Mm. Uh, they uh, objected, ruled out of order the president's attempt mm. to postpone the election. Mm to December. Yes. That's what he had declared after they had stopped him from uh, mm. changing the constitution, the constitution and so on. He postponed the election. Yeah. The election Easter, should yeah. have happened in February. Yes. But he extended it. And uh, people went to the courts and the courts were firm and said no, the president has no power to extend the election mm. beyond his term <laughs> because because mm. his term is ending on 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 2nd february mm. so how can he extend the choice of an, of his successor to a period beyond For another year beyond his term mm. and the court said no that is unacceptable it's wrong mm. the election must go ahead and that's how the election went ahead the Electoral Commission, too, um, uh, took some decisions that were, again, uh, you know, commendable uh, regarding who can be uh, registered to be a candidate and who can't. But they refused so Sonko Osman. Yeah, eventually it was because of the court, not because of the Electoral Commission. It is because mm. the, he was sentenced. Yes by some court. Mm. Uh, this is why I'm saying that the court, yes, they fought for independence, but they were also 
yeah. in other circumstances really used in the persecution. Um, so uh, the, the, the institutions in Senegal also struggled. Uh, they were not uh, and could not uh, in the circumstances be entirely independent but they asserted to a good extent their will mm -hmm. and that helped, helped a lot yes, sir. Um, so um, y you know the uh, you don't forget the parties we have been discussing here the party of uh, uh, Osman Sonko mm. and uh, Diomai Fai mm. Pastef was banned. Yes. So it's not there. The, mm. This Fai now stood as an independent. Yeah. <laughs> mm. But the population, in spite of not having a party, and the, the other fellow, you know, there was a ruling party and so the population just went ahead with or without a party to Fight. So, you so this you want to say can be copped and pasted in Uganda? No, no country is similar to another. And this is another lesson that I think Africans must, uh, must uh, learn. Because they tend to get excited once they see something exactly, that's the thing. Uh, happening somewhere. They say, oh, now ourselves also. No, every country has its own dynamics. Mm. And we have a totally different dynamic here. Uh, whereas in uh, Senegal, there have been actually peaceful handovers of government, yeah. uh, troublesome, but yeah. eventually peaceful, mm -hmm. uh, very many times, right from uh, the uh, independence uh, uh, president, up to now, um, they have, and I think this is going to be possibly the fifth president. Yeah. They have all been peaceful transitions. In Uganda, we have never had even one uh, transition. I have told you they have never had the military mm. directly intervene in politics. Here it has been permanently the military since 1966 uh, participating in the politics and we have been living literally under military regimes mm. so we are dealing with the different cups of tea also the constitution of the population i mean the how the 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 the, the social uh, demographic of the people is uh, is important you see in senegal 97 percent of the population are muslims yes and uh, they are they they highly observe and respect their the muslim clerics and there are about four segments of these Muslim organizations that uh, represent uh, the, the whole population. So, and, and, and they therefore have uh, strong influence in how politics uh, is, is run because all the political actors are also adherents uh, within the formations of these clerics. Yes. And so there is a moderation that is there mm. that you don't find in most other countries like, uh, like ours. Uh, there's someone who can at least advise or control the president or, some, or there's someone they can yeah, report yeah, to. They, they are there. So there is... Uh, yeah, they, they are different um, moderators. Uh, so th so the, I'm simply trying to underscore the point that mm. 
what happens in one country cannot be uh, transferred uh, yeah, to, to another to another country. There are lessons we learn. What do you think are those lessons that uh, they can pick I have already pointed it's... out the need for constant vigilance yes, of the population. That is a standard wherever you are. Mm. They have told you that people will only regate what they fight for, yeah. regardless of where you where they are, regardless of the uh, political formations that are there. Mm. People get what they fight for. And in order to fight, they must be organized. So how they get organized to fight for their freedom and their services and their, uh, you know, the, 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 the rule of law and so on uh, is critical. If they are not uh, uh, organized in a manner that is equal to the task they have, they will fail. And that's why I've been asking here my colleagues mm. to reassess the way political parties, what role political parties play, how political parties themselves are organized internally uh, and run. All these matters are critical for uh, for the changes that we are we are fighting for, so one is uh, that we must have active, vigilant citizenry, and that is built too. Yeah. And part of uh, such engagements where we talk to the uh, to the people out there is one form of the processes that are needed to build an active and strong citizenry, mm. um, mobilization and information delivery is critical. Secondly is the organization yes. that, um, uh, that follows mm. that, that is necessary uh, following that. And mm. thirdly is that then they must fight, they must use their active uh, participation in, in matters around them to fight for what uh, they, 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 they desire to see happening in their countries. Okay. So, you know, it's been um, a really uh, heartwarming to see how the situation ended in, uh, in, um, in, in Senegal because, uh, you know, Fire and Osman Sonko were released only 10 days. Yes. To the, to the election, to the election. Mm. Um, and uh, you had here the um, you know the the, the, the state uh, you know running with all the usual state resources uh, you know but um, uh, not not being um, subdued so it was really good um we had the delegation there which has which was keeping us uh, updated about what was going on there is a platform uh, that was formed for opposition yeah. political parties in Africa in which we are participating mm. and so we had uh, our colleague uh, the honorable Wafula Ogutu amongst the team uh, that came from different countries that was there monitoring the situation. And indeed, as uh, you indicated, we were there in November last year to try and again put pressure uh, on the uh, government there to see that uh, justice is served, that, uh, you know, they release the people who were being held um, without uh, just cause, mm -hmm. uh, so that there could be, you know, uh, reasonable competition, and uh, that elections themselves could go ahead as they eventually did. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Kiza Bessinger. 38 minutes past 12 midday. Uh, you're still watching uh, Digitalk TV. This is the Interface Show. Uh, we're still talking about what was happening in Senegal. Now, allow me just call for this particular video of uh, uh, the National Anti-Platform Delegation to uh, the Uganda Kingdom. We had 
a few words that were spoken by uh, the Katikiro of Uganda, Chowachitiwa Charles Peter Maigan. This is what he had to say before we delve into the conversation of what is happening in Uganda's leading opposition, that is the National Unity Platform. Let's go and watch this video. Abantu, Bugiribi Bagara, Ibaroza. Balemekubi Wakun Sorobo to Rukwa Abiyoged. Bakunani, Bugiribi Bagara. Bamariba Gindi. Kasaba Biranga Babikuri de Mateka to Venachevo, no yet, to Bakutama Dirisagaba Nevagasa. A dandy yobun to Chin to Chukuru. A runway, but Nabia Bufuzi. Tuba Saba, much to Aringa Chukuru, no. Avant to Kubane Dembe, Okogera Chevagala. Tuba in the name of Yama Africa, no guest Senegal on the president. Never will present Bamita Wade. Sima yoba mumu jukiro ba chali yoba ya fa. Ya tawana ne se, senga olie ya liko ba mitanga sedo senga. Okutuwa lubukuru. Na vera muku vuga nya government miyako ba habidi. Atena hebo ya jambukuru na azabelo kuchusa se mateka. Naona abadeko ono president ya abadeko we senego. Obaye sale. Sale. Na ya gezeza kukupala pala nyamu se mateka. Sima nyo wamu Uganda vya alivi vadewe vyo kuwata msemateka. <laughs> e dembe di obu ntu. Chikuru kubanga. E vyo obu fuzi simu zanyo. E ranze mensanga vana vya obu fuzi nchipabu ulira. E vyo obu fuzi simu zanyo nge vyo obu fuzi evi vivita mawanga ne vita naba ntu. E vyo obu fuzi nsonga nkuru e chenka ndao. Chembamu lwa stuagala wa kazanyiri zimbi obu fuzi. Kubanga kazanyiri zitama nyimu wendo kwecho chari mu. Kwa galaba tuwalebi obufuzi niti mulimo guwabu vunanyi zibwa. Ogu kuza, ogu zimbo, ogu te guanga. Mwe, abali mkufuga nyamu. Chituwale niti chikuru nyo kubanga. Chisara bechiri tuwa na mtu walobu yinza. Namu ene mutasa chitiwa mdemberi obu. Ensi mulima mjisudeyo. Mchitandi kekati. Mwino gumikrizi gana. Ona lebo senyo nya ina abana babidi kati. Achari msajja muto. No chakula baba na bonga tiba fana na yenga baba na bo unochikolo tete unawa kuhu kasuke bweiro muino kuiga ukumi krisi gana ulimu na ukumi krisi zamune muino kuiga kusinga na mwechiti bwa muino biga katika muri muri doru vuganya kubanga bota biga ngato na funa bwi zato rubo no bufuna onobo gamba wako. Buli asovia tivata mute. Buli asovia tivata mute. Muino kubite kama unkola. Nzenze mukuru wa muinga katikiro wa Buganda. Nine betu kuchiba gamba. Rashida wa asovia mumuite. Muchala wange Aisha wa asovia kavanda anti wambogo. Mumuite mutule mugele. Bwe mune ma nizo kwevuma. Echi nada koko egu ambulago. <laughs> Wemuna egu ambulago nga tivivale mie. Anti agabuwa ageru wanya luanya. Gabaga agala kukolaji. Ama gezi mwembamba wade marunji mungkubi de ingalo. <laughs> Charles Peter Maiga, the Katikiro of Buganda, as he was uh, speaking to a delegation that was from the National Unity Platform as we uh, organized for the Kabaka's birthday run that is scheduled for next month. Uh, Dr. Kiza BCJ, my question to you is, uh, with all that has happened, it has culminated into the suspension of Poga, who was a uh, former leader of opposition and deputy president. Is this the best way to have handled this particular crisis in that particular political formation? Well, uh, I, I think I have previously responded to this that um, internal dynamics of a political process or a political party uh, are best commented on with full knowledge of what is going on within there, which frankly I am not privy to. Uh, and uh, 
would not uh, be prudent to start giving marks on uh, how uh, people are handling situations. Because I've heard arguments about uh, what has gone on inside there, uh, which meetings were held, when they were held, how they were held, and what was said in those meetings that, frankly, I cannot, uh, because some have denied things happening, others, you know, say, for example, I heard that um, um, Puga had uh, accepted that he made a mistake in a meeting. Which is on record. Uh, who, who, who's uh, record? Yeah, it's on record. The, the meeting was minuted. There are minutes that confirm he accepted and he apologized for what he I did. I haven't read those minutes. I haven't, uh, uh, you know, even when I read, you know, they, they will be contested. <laughs> minutes are also contested. Mm. Uh, that's why minutes have to be confirmed. There are people who are in the meeting. Yes, and you see people are in the meeting at each one. Even when they are not, even as we talk here, mm. Uh, I can say something and you understand it differently from what they meant. Mm. And, and so, uh, commenting about internal systems of a, uh, a delicate matter like that uh, should be done with a lot of prudence. And uh, I wouldn't like to be a judge of how they are managing their internal processes. Uh, what I have tried to do in cautioning them is that you see the internal problems that we have or have internal party problems that we have or have the same source. That is the one capturing the who captured the country. That's the same source that you will trace the problems in UPC between Akena and uh, Otunu, or the leaderships of both. It's the same source that you will trace the problems in DP. It is the same source that you will trace the problems in UPC. And I dare say it's the same source that you can trace problems in NUP. And uh, therefore, rather than drill on uh, trying to deal with the problems that were caused, because that's what we all try to do, you know, to sort out the... Because they keep on creating more. You sort of this, they create more. Uh, we should, not just as parties, but as a country, deal with the source of the problems. Before we deal with the source of the problems, yes. these people are mature adult, adults. They are sane people. The, the, you see, for you e cannot say that there is an influence over that person. Yeah, yes, you see, for example, I have told you that the whole of that parliament is corrupt, and people go there through corruption and stay there through corruption. I have stated this long before. Mm. So, drilling on the corruption in parliament is drilling on the symptom. What created the parliament to be as corrupt as it is today? It is the system that has been deliberately constructed. And, and it's not just parliament. Anybody who is in politics, actually, electoral politics today, mm. is involved in a corrupt system. Because there is nobody who gets into an office, elected office, without paying. That is corruption. If you have to pay <laughs> to get into an office, it's corruption. And it continues because uh, that payment will have to be recouped somehow. So it continues. So it is structural corruption. 
corruption is structural. I have said, and it doesn't matter which party they come from, people in parliament are corrupt. All those committees of parliament are corrupt. And they are corrupt for a reason. Because they have, it has been constructed that parliament does actually becomes the executive also. They must buy ambulances to deal with health care in their constituencies. That's not the work of parliament ordinarily. Mm. So you must look for money to buy ambulances and to put in fuel and to transport patients. It's because that's the only way the people will feel that you are their leader. It's just the system. But, but precisely, the system precisely. Is. So I've said that a system has been constructed mm. which is a corruption system. It's a system. Somebody asked me whether NUP can end corruption in the parliament. I said it can't. Because it's a whole system. It can, it's, the only way to end the system of corruption in Uganda is the revolution. It will not be stopped by tinkering with the edges. Are you trying you know, to... Dealing with whether it's a Nita, whether it's a um, Puga, or whether it's a, uh, somebody else. It won't stop. Are you trying to blanket um, the corruption of the opposition in the entire grand scheme of things? Because the, the opposition, the opposition, the, the opposition we you think see, them as a saint, at least. Uh, they are supposed to the check. The opposition, and uh, I beg uh, mm. the forgiveness of any sprinkling of people, whether on the opposition or government, that may not be thieves. Mm. I, I, I really beg your indulgence. Forgive me mm. uh, if you are there. But I'm talking about the structural corruption, deliberately built corruption as a system of government. Mm. So if, if you have that situation and then you get diverted into trying to sort out who is corrupt and dealing with who is corrupt in that mess of corruption, you are missing the point because you spend a lot of energy, you know, in dealing with symptoms because these are symptoms. You see, you can... For example, you can have malaria as the problem in your body, malaria parasites. Now, they will create headache. They can create diarrhea. They can create uh, high temperature uh, in your body. All these are problems, and you can... If you are not uh, careful, yes, spend all your time fighting to control the headache. You take medicines for headache, it comes down a little. When the medicine wears off, it comes back. You take more medicine. In the meantime, you are taking medicine for diarrhea uh, and uh, try to fight the diarrhea. In the meantime, you are taking medicine to bring down your temperature. In the meantime, you are taking temperature until you die because the malaria continues escalating in your body that is what we are dealing with so it's not that you should not deal with the headache if you have malaria you can also deal with the headache but it's more critical to deal with the, what is causing the headache mm -hmm. that is that is all i am saying Yes, there is all this corruption. Yes, we can try to deal with it. But let's focus more importantly on where it is coming from. Because otherwise, we will be diverted and spend a lot of time and resources treating the symptoms. Uh, and, uh, you know, as we talk now, there is no place that is not infested with corruption because it is the system you go to the hospital you know i have told you a story here how what happens when you go to Malawi. yes in order to get a file you have to pay mm. 
in order to be tested in the laboratory, you have to pay. Although these services are supposed to be free. In order to get a bed, you have to buy it. In order to, so, how, how will you fight all these people when the source of all this is the same? It starts with the system that was built by Mr. Museveni, which he is actually not ashamed of, you know, and, and uh, you know, we should at least uh, appreciate that uh, uh, he is upfront, that, you know, he has a corrupt system. Uh, he thinks it's wonderful. You have seen he fight the inspector general. I don't know why he appointed the inspector general of government to start with. When the inspector general of government said, let's deal with this. Said, oh, no, 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 no. Don't scare them. They will run. They will take away our money. Leave them, leave them, leave them. So, but, but, but before you even talk about that, because he even recently came out and defended the Speaker of Parliament. Absolutely. But, but he before he even, has to. No, he before has to we, because it's his system. Let, let's first look at, at, at you, the people who Ugandans have tried to embrace, support. A case in point for the National Unity Platform. This was a protest vote. They even voted people they did not know about. But it was just a symbol of saying, we want change today. But these people that Ugandans have tried their level best to support have disappointed them. A case in point of FDC, a case yes. in point of NUP. You see, again, Where should the Ugandan again, run? Again. Because at the end of the day, you, so, you talk about again, organization. Again, please understand. Yes, sir. Yes, the people have supported uh, NUP, mm. uh, but NUP has not gotten to where it should be. Yes, sir. The power does not have power. Nope does not have power at all. Has nothing. <laughs> so <laughs> looking at it as the solution is missing the point. The point must be that the fight must continue. It did not end up with the election. Mm. And that's where we are totally, we have missed the point, thinking that after election, uh, now... Uh, let's wait for another another election. No. Mm. The fight has not ended. So looking at a loop which has no power, what can it do? It can't do anything. Mm. Or looking at FDC that has uh, some 30 members of parliament in a house of 500 people, what can it do? So the and, and even if they had many people in the parliament, I've told you that parliament itself has no power. Mm. It's just a ultimbe. It's, it's just a veil. The power is in the family of Mr. Museveni. That's where the power resides. That's what must be dealt with. Until that family is dismantled, the power at least in the, that family is dismantled and goes back to the population. Mm. Let's not waste our time looking for whom they have bribed. Okay, talking about the family <laughs> and talking about power, uh, we have a new CDF and of course he's from that particular family as uh, we speak. That is Mr. General Mohozi Kaine Rugaba. He's now uh, the CDF for the Uganda People's Defense Forces. We're going to be talking about that. And when we come back from the break, still, um, the, these voices, the dissenting voices, the voices for change look to be at their worst today. It literally looks to be they at their worst. How can this be changed for the better? That and much more, I'll be giving you uh, that and much more as, before, as we come back from the short commercial break. But before you go there, I have Biamukama Gerald who's on, Feroz Mwonge is on, Busi Deko is on, Kanson Dugu Frank is on, uh, I have Makolo Kavuma, a lot of people are on. So ladies and gentlemen, when I come back, I'm going to read some of your messages for you people. And please, if you have not yet sent a message, send in a message, a question, your remark, where you're watching from, and we'll be able to read them before we end this particular program. My name is Edgar Matthew Karanga. Let's go for a short commercial break. This is The Interface. <laughs>
the alternative dig talk real issues real talk What did the church do? Tell him, man, what's up? Man, can you imagine people just dump everywhere? Someone drinks water and throws the bottle wherever. Come on, Rogers. What else do you expect people to do with an empty bottle? Do you know that plastics take at least 450 years to decompose? What? That's a long time. Exactly. Because plastics are made out of a lightweight and flexible material that doesn't decompose easily. And plastics everywhere in the environment cause plastic pollution. What is plastic pollution now? It is the accumulation of plastic waste in the environment, like bottles, polythene bags, straws, all of these contribute to plastic pollution. I have been using them without knowing their effect. Yeah, a lot of people have. Plastics are a danger to the ecosystem, both on land and in water. So how can we overcome this problem? Is there something we can do? Oh yes, we can reduce by minimizing the use of plastics, reuse by repurposing them, or recycle by collecting and processing them into new products. Everyone wants to change the world, but no one wants to change themselves for the world. How about we change our habits for the world? And, and it, it starts, starts with, with me and, and you. This message is brought to you by Alternative Digitalk. The Alternative Digitalk. Real issues. Real talk. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, from that short commercial break. It's exactly 1 p.m. We are into the second and final hour of this particular interface program. My name is Edgar Matthew Karuhanga. I can see a couple of messages coming through. Uganda, wake up. But, doctor, you cannot fight Museveni alone and leave, uh, and leave his roots to cut or to remove the tree. You need to start from the bottom. Those old politicians have played a big part to, to make the tree of Museveni stand strong. Then there is Bainom Gisha Jacob, you say impressive. Kags Mura, you say continue to educate our people, Mr. President. Um, Kennedy Aturinde, I thank you so much for watching. You say it, it's bad to hear people like Maiga saying to Gumikirize Ababi. It's real bad. Sometimes actions is the quick response to people like Mpuga. Now, this is what we are talking about. Is that the way to go? Or has it brought a lot of divisions in the party? But Doctor will also be hinting about that. Then Mohasa Emmanuel, thank you so much for watching. You say, Mr. Kebi, the problem we have in Uganda is people calling themselves as opposition, uh, as opposing the ruling government. Yet what they do is not different from the dictatorship. An example is what's happening in Uganda now. Mr. Museveni has accepted to work uh, with corrupt and thieves in his government and has not acted against them. FDC was the strongest party and the party which every Ugandan had hope in that it will relieve us from 70s. Uh, your, party your party leaders allowed to take money uh, from an evil source but never acted against them. Uh, we need to change our attitude towards every member who is caught in corruption. Hakim Semwanga, you say Mr. President, my president, thank you so much for watching. Honorable Isko Lozio, I'm waiting for the Soga One show. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's hope for the best. I'll just uh, end with Isevakama Milton for now, who says, Doctor, we love you as a freedom fighter. You are among the Ugandan freedom, fi the freedom fighters in Uganda. But you did a mistake at your early age because you promoted Annette Anita Monk, uh, Tayebwa, Jack Sabiti, Semuju Nganda, and more collaborators of Museveni. You built them under your capacity, Doctor. You did mess because they are political businessmen like Mpuga. But for us, we are starting to clean, we are, start, we are starting cleaning Nope, I think you're saying we are starting to clean NUP. Nwagawa Richard Dison, thank you so much for watching. You're watching live from Dubai. And uh, of course, lastly, Stella Nyanzi, you're also watching. Thank you so much for watching, Doctor. So, uh, you know, I am grateful to all of those who are watching this program and um, <coughs> who are sending in messages. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. First of all, you know, you must separate, uh, you know, emotions with uh, what 
ought to be done. You know, there are many things that anger us, annoy us, and mm. uh, you, you want to, you know, get somebody and, uh, you know, tear him to pieces. But you must, uh, if, especially if, you know, for leaders, you need to uh, be uh, careful uh, in how you manage any situation. You see, there is a lot of comparison, for example, mm. with the people who take money from Museveni and what happened in FDC. Even when I was party leader of FDC, there were many people who were taking money from Museveni in my leader, amongst my leaders. And I have had time to say that at some point, you know, I would really feel rather discouraged looking around mm. uh, a table of our leaders and wondering, uh, you know, whether uh, it's uh, meaningful to discuss uh, how to fight <laughs> people that are represented <laughs> in the meeting. So it's tricky, but you have to pick your wars, you know? If you, this is, this is what I, sp I spent time uh, before the break drilling on. Mm. Because these people who are corrupt on the table, even if you fight them off the table, others will, will be recruited still on the table because the recruiter is still there. You will never win that war of, uh, you know, being diverted, fighting with the, the corrupt people in our systems. That's why the focus, you, and I'm not saying you shouldn't, if it's very harmful that you shouldn't do anything, but the focus must remain on where it is coming from. Because it will continue coming. It will not stop. What was the problem in FDC is that it now started at the very top. In other words, the whole institution was now being okay. uh, taken. And uh, uh, you see, I would never even have had any problem with them if they brought the matter of whether to cooperate with Museveni in a meeting and said, by the way, what they were telling me in, 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 in private, saying, you know, we have tried this, it has failed. We have tried this, it has failed. So now let's try cooperating, you know. It's a position that can be managed democratically within an institution. You discuss it and uh, if the majority say, okay, that, that's the way we want to go, then they go. Those who feel that they can't go with them, they make decisions on how to manage uh, the Muslim. But they didn't. They conspiratorially went and negotiated on behalf of the institution, <laughs> you know? mm. uh, and that uh, that is very different from having a leadership that is stable and not compromised, and having problems within it. As I have said, they will be everywhere. These problems will be everywhere. If they attack the top, then the institution is finished. If those problems get to the very top, then the institution is finished. Uh, otherwise, uh, that's why it's important for all parties to interrogate how they are structured and how people get into their structures. Because I have said many times that political parties are supposed to be open to everybody and, you know, public institutions where you come in and uh, become free to seek leadership and so on and so forth. Mm. But in a, a dictatorship like ours, if you don't take very serious steps to manage how people get in and move uh, up and down, the dictatorship will come in and take over the institution. Mm. 
And that's what has been happening. Uh, so how institutions, democratic institutions, ostensibly democratic institutions, mm. function in a military regime is something that we have to uh, very carefully, uh, you know, uh, work out then, then how yes you're talking about that and that that is what i want to just talk about with you how then do you think uh, these political leaders or the likes of the chagulanyis the vestiges who are leaders of these to, to, top organizations how ca how can they really fight these evils for example the the corruption without coming off as they are so extreme because you look at what Chagulani is literally doing, one would say morally it is right. He has to stand up for, for a cause like corruption. We are fighting corruption. It's one of the biggest problems, if not the biggest problem we have in Uganda. How then do you think no, I, 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 handle I, it? No, I'm, I'm saying corruption, where it is found, needs to be fought. And I don't think that people, even who are talking about what is happening in Nuke, there is anybody who is saying corruption should not be dealt with. The only voices I have heard mm. are how the processes of doing it have been managed. Not whether, uh, uh, you know, issues of corruption should be dealt with. So do you stay working with such people who have... And, and the internal processes of how they manage this, this is what I was telling you, mm. is what I have desisted from getting mixed in. Okay. Because I don't have uh, full information of, mm. about what has been done within NUC. But what um, I must continue to point out to NUP and all other parties is that these corruption uh, matters are symptoms of the big problem. Mm. So yes, manage them as you may, but don't lose the main focus being on where it is coming from. Mm. Because the symptoms will keep on coming. You won't, you won't end them unless you deal with the source. You can remove Mpuga, another one, another Mpuga will crop up. Yeah. You, can, you can remove... <laughs> because you're also hearing some, some issues about the, the, the current leader of so, opposition. So, uh, the, this is why I'm saying that the major focus must be on where it is coming from. How do you how do you reconcile and unite now these voices back to sanity? Because as you're going yeah, to maybe before we go ready. there, yes. you know there again the voices of those who cause us problems come in all kinds of tones. Mm. What the prize Mr Museven wants to get in doing whatever he does mm. is first and foremost yes, to divide and cause conflict amongst those who are supposed to fight him. That is his first prize. Mm. Divide. And they will use every opportunity to widen a gap between those who are fighting for or supposed to fight for change. Even amongst the callers, mm. I heard the voice of saying, the old people support corruption. We must deal with them, we the young people. And that is a, a theme that I hear very regularly. Again, dividing the old and the young. As if, you know, there is a, a clear line that you can draw between who is old and who is young, first of all. I don't know where that line is drawn. Because I even hear people who are 50 saying they are young. <laughs> <laughs> you are approaching the life expectancy of Uganda. <laughs> like we young people. <laughs> now they've changed. They say, is the, is the, the one who's uniting the young and the old? <laughs> so the, the, the young and old, first of all, is debatable. <laughs> but yes. even more importantly, corruption knows no young or old. Actually knows even no gender. Mm. Women are corrupt, men are corrupt, young are corrupt, old are corrupt. Mm. But when you start uh, using, you know, 
identity saying you know we the young mm. or we from this area mm. or we from you know this religion or we know that you are playing into the uh, hands of that one who wants to cause divisions and keep on uh, causing conflict amongst people in order to maintain his control on the country. So whether young or old, corruption is corruption. Mm. And uh, as I have said, they are young, very corrupt young people. In fact, uh, the, Uganda is a young country. Yes. Uh, 70 percent uh, below 30 or so <laughs> and they are the, they are the corrupt <laughs> so it's not it's not an age thing and it will not be dealt with unless we end the capture of the country and its resources by the family of mr Museveni. So we must mobilize and first deal with that. As long as you don't have priority in what you are doing, you won't, you won't move. You see? Mm. So if we were, even if we, you know, you can, you can injure yourself in the struggle, you can get all kinds of problems, but continue focused on ending it. Then you come back and deal with the, you know, it's like, uh, uh, you see, when the, the, there is a saying, I think in many languages, mm. that when the kite is looming in the air, the kite, mm. you know, you don't start, you know, uh, disciplining the chicks that are eating your your your, your maize or something in their compound they are doing bad to you all right mm. but the kite will take them <laughs> if you don't first of all fight off the kite mm. then you can come and discipline the chicken yes sir so the the, the, uh, the point here is the priority of where the greater danger comes from mm. the greater danger what is causing all this corruption and it is the system i've said it is the system of governance mm. so it will be everywhere it will be in the parties it will be in the religious organizations it will be everywhere it is the system that we must approve okay uh, uh, doctor before we leave that particular issue i have a video by a gentleman yesterday who won an achievement award that is uh, professor george wilson Kanye Hamba, and in his uh, speech he had something that he wanted uh, to tell Dr. Kiza Vesija here. Uh, let's listen to it. A, a message for Dr. Vesija now. Kiza Vesija, I love him. Mm. Not because he's from Kijezi, but because he's a, a very active and potential president after seven. Mm. I see him as the president of his own party and a potential candidate for the presidency next round. 2020. Having said that, he's making a mistake by keeping quiet. <laughs> I gather he has got a program on media which is often followed. Mm. But he doesn't say whether he still wants to be president of Uganda. What do you want him to say? I want him to say that now. <laughs> that I want to be a presidential candidate mm. in 2026 or wherever. If he's afraid of Museveni. What does that chew, sir? If it, what does it chew if he informs the public as early as now, in your view? Or what does he lose if he doesn't inform them as early as now? It's yes. either or. You see, I know some Baroccoli. Yeah. And uh, they believe in the Bible as I do. 
I'm a Christian, but don't hide your candle <laughs> and uh, the basket. Mm. Show it mm. to the public. Let the public know you want to be president. So for me, the only criticism I have about the VCJ mm. is keeping it, his supporters waiting to see I will be a presidential candidate either in 26 or after 26. Akiza Vesija, you've heard the message of uh, the old man. Yeah, uh, Professor George uh, Kanyehama is, uh, you know, an old colleague. Mm. Uh, we served together in government. Uh, I appeared before him when he was Supreme Court judge in the presidential petition of 2006 uh, in which he made an outstanding judgment um, of that uh, petition. I have the greatest uh, respect for him. He's a, a uniquely intelligent fellow. Even in his old age, his mind is sharp. But uh, you know what he's saying about me declaring that I, should, I will want to be a presidential candidate rather surprises me because indeed him having presided over a petition that we filed in 206 would know uh, that the massive injustices that any candidate uh, who comes up faces are such that, uh, you know, uh, being a candidate does not in itself offer a solution. Uh, I am I'm wondering why he is not alive to that fact, that just being a candidate uh, in a massively rigged process. Moreover, where the courts have since been totally taken over compared to what uh, they were during his times. Uh, because during his time, and he has written himself, uh, extensively about what happened in the 206 uh, how the court was influenced mm. unduly influenced uh, by Mr. Museven. He has written yeah. uh, and has since Mr. Museven has since appointed <laughs> all of the judges that replaced him to make sure that no Kanyihamba type of judge <laughs> ever enters the courts. So there is nowhere to run to. Mm. Even after the massive injustice, it does not make any sense running to court, as I did twice. Mm. So to that extent, I am sorry that I will continue to disappoint Professor Kanyihamba mm. by not... Uh, um, you know, uh, looking at 2026 as a solution. Okay. Um, uh, you, you're not only disappointing Professor Kanye Hamba, you're disappointing a girl, our lady called Angela Nachiranda. Not only you, I also want him as a presidential candidate come 2026. <laughs> He's the only hope we have in Uganda to liberate us. Please, doctor, kindly look into our request. I think the request has been denied. Uh, doctor, let's go into the other issue. You mentioned the first family, and as we're speaking today, uh, the CDF is General um, Hosi Kainerugaba, who is a um, former Commander Land Forces, Air Forces, but he's also the first son. What do you think of the appointment to CDF of um, Mr. Museveni's son? Well, I think it's uh, a good thing. 
kata general muhozi has been placed uh, in the office of the cdf mm. because it at least eliminates uh, you know lack of clarity that uh, was otherwise there mm. uh, Anybody who cared to follow what goes on would have known that uh, he was the CDF all along. What? It could not have been Mbadi. Mbadi could not have been a CDF. First of all, you remember where Mbadi came from. Yes. Uh, he was an ADC. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm. <laughs> of, yes. Of, 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 Mr. Museven uh, and as SFC uh, uh, so uh, his going there did not mean that Muhozi would take orders from him he couldn't uh, so I was actually pitting uh, General Mbadi, you know, I, I, I sympathized with him. Mm. Being in an office, he knew uh, he had no power in. Uh, it's a terrible thing, especially if it is a command position. We have been here talking about uh, General Muhozi violating the army law violating the constitution until even his father general seven he had to apologize to kenyans on his behalf for his uh, you know uh, uh, transgressions uh, so where was mbadi in all this because he is a serving officer. He was under General Mbadi. Have you ever had Mbadi raise a finger anywhere? Say anything? So he was not there. Uh, but there was confusion that there is a CDF. Even the people in Kasese where Mbadi hails from, mm. I, I was seeing some excited that they have a CDF, whereas yes. not. You know, uh, because he would go to Kasese escorted with, uh, you know, these pickups escorting uh, supposedly a CDF. But when he's actually a Semufu, <laughs> you know, Semufu mm. is, uh, uh, is, you know, the, the, the uh, what do you call uh, this? Uh, statue no 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 the thing uh, you put in the garden a scarecrow a scarecrow you know mm. like a scarecrow seated in the cdf <laughs> uh, vehicle written on with the you know cdf but, but that that is actually CDF. worrying what you're saying it is the truth i mean buddy was never a cdf uh so the cdf the real cdf has sat in the chair which is i think reasonable that uh, at least they have eliminated now the pretenses. Place. The pretenses are gone. He is where he is supposed to be. You see, the real CDF up to today mm. is also not Muhozi. From 1981, when the National Resistance Army was formed, its commander from the time it was formed is seven up to today. The chief in command. You can call him commander in chief. Commander mm. in chief is supposed to be a civilian actually. Mm. The post of commander in chief is a civilian. The commander of NRA mm. up to today is seven, And that's why even the chairman of the high command and the members of the high command have now been put in law 
Yes. They are designated, even their names are there. Yes, the they, are, they, are in the, they are part of the law. Yes. So the commander of the forces is the one who created them, Mr. Museven. He is up today, and I believe until he dies, he will be the commander of, his, of the forces he created. He is the commander. The two I see, the second in command, or deputy CDF, is not a Kiding or what was it? Is it o Kiding, I o Kiding think. or something I had, yeah. uh, who, who is now designated. Yeah. The deputy CDF is General Saleh. And that is why General Saleh was in Gulu to uh, preside over. To the preside over the taking over of the seat of CDF. So General Saleh is the real deputy CDF. The CDF is... In a way, Ugandan thought Saleh left is power in The CDF is Museveni himself. The, so, Muhozi is the third in line now seated at the helm of the forces uh, as a day-to-day -day, uh, commander. Uh, but, of course, you know, that is the reality. So, the, the Mbadi was a, a pretense mm. that uh, has now gone away. And what was dubbed a, a, a reshuffle in the government, mm. its main purpose was to take Mbadi there. Before you go there, what is the problem with Mohoz Kainerugaba becoming the CDF? Is there a problem with the son of the president commanding the forces? He's a full general. He has served in yeah. the military. Is there a problem? The problem is what I have already described, mm. that he comes into that... The reason he was the CDF even before he was named mm. is because the family, the reason Saleh, although he is no longer in the force, mm. the reason he is the one who sits the CDFs on their seat is because he is the brother of General Museveni. So the family rule is the problem, not where the different members of the family are. You see, mm. let me tell you, the capture of Uganda is maintained by two things. Control of the economy and resources, mm. on the one hand, control of the forces, on the other. Look at control of the economy. You will find the real finance minister is still Saleh. Of course, the, even in the constitution, it is Museveni. He's the chief minister of finance. Yes, yes, even in the constitution. But his two IC again. It's not Kasaija and all these, uh, the, the other Mabati thief or what, it's not those. <laughs> the second in the command in the finance is Saleh. And he's also the head of wealth creation. Mm. He's the one who oversees wealth creation. wealth creation in the whole country. So what was NADS, what was what, is the head of wealth creation. Then you have Ruawogo, who is also there in the economy. He's the head of exports. I don't know whether he's head of what, but he's there in the, in the economic uh, uh, picture. Mm. You'll find uh, the brother, the, the son-in-law, is also uh, uh, somewhere there. In the, in the exports. Yes, in the economy. Mm. So the economy is one arm of the state, of the family capture.
of the state. The other one is the security, where now, as I have pointed out, it is uh, clear that uh, uh, all these people, you know, the Rwerus and uh, all these people who were hanging in there uh, were window dressing. <laughs> Now, Rweru has been taken, I don't know, to He's be... a senior presidential uh, I don't know where, and uh, Mbadi is uh, taken somewhere, where the others all went, uh, the other Mohozi, where he went, Aronda, where he went. <laughs> all this, you know, it's just an, an evacuation of the seat of control. So, that is uh, what is happening. So whether it is a good thing, I don't know. Whether Muhoz therefore now being substantively there, mm. so that where there is now nobody who is... Because even when he was not there, people in the army would have to go to him to intervene in other situations. Uh, people still go to Saleh to intervene in the military. So now that he is there, hopefully, mm. at least uh, there will be no... Uh, maneuvers of people looking for solutions. Owen would say since he's there now, he's not going to be politicking anymore because of the office of the chief of defense forces. No, he will. He will. And in fact, I think I read somewhere that he said, no, it will. I think it was Saleh who was installing mm. him saying he has to yeah. secure the politics. Among other things which he said he has to secure. But he also said he's now back for good in the army. Yes, and he yeah. has to secure the politics. And that's exactly what the, the military does. It is to say, that's why the family needs the military to secure their, their, their hold on power. And that's why, you know, uh, the military court martial, for example, mm. is uh, used in the politics. Uh, whoever they want to detain because the civilian courts are more watched and uh, the lawyers there, the judges are more constrained by the rules and laws and so you, they take you to the chairman of the military court marshal who is a direct nani. Speaking of that, I, I have here a document by a gentleman who's called Luther Ferdinand. Luther Ferdinand was an activist who was incarcerated in 2021 February. For a full year, he was incarcerated. Now, from the time they incarcerated him, the charge that was put against him was he was wearing military fatigue. Now, Ferdinand has been reporting to the military court marshal for the last two years, and they've never listened to his case. If you can see here, um, the gentleman on camera, you can see the times this gentleman has been um, going to the Makindia court marshal and reporting, but up to today, nothing really has been, there is no case that has been heard of him or anything of the sort. You can see the reporting, there is this page has actually been filled by reporting literally every time. Uh, this other page too also uh, has been filled. He has been reporting to the military court marshal, but none, we are even now on the last particular page. You can see that it's also soon getting full. But this gentleman has not, his case has not actually been heard. And uh, this is two years, doctor. Two yeah, years. so, so th this is why I'm saying that the military is to secure their politics. Mm. You may have realized that the first action as a minister of uh, uh, Baram mm. Barugahara uh, was to uh, appeal to Museveni to release mm. the, the captives in the military cells, you know? The, the NOOP members. Yes, uh, mm. uh, uh, and they paraded one uh, who was, uh, you know, saying, you know, we are going to help you, uh, you know, that they are now coming to become activists in NRM to help um, seventy and uh, uh, right from the prison mm. uh, and that they should not be released and he said yes I will 
I, I, except you know those who burn tires. Why should anybody who burn well, tires? Except those who killed. Yes, uh, these yeah, ones, yes. Okay. Why, why would anybody, if he was accused of burning tires, why would he be in prison for years, not tried, no bail? No. <laughs> why? You know, the mm. people have been there for three years, no trial, no bail, he really unconstitutionally detained. Because the constitution does not allow anybody whose case has not been heard. If it's a capital offense, mm. who has not yet been uh, committed for trial? You know, the, 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 the law does not allow. So they are actually illegally detained. Mm. But now, uh, you know, they are saying, you know, we, are, we, are, we can free them because uh, this... Uh, uh, aid of General Muhozi, and uh, of course all that is the optics, because Barugara has been promoting uh, General Muhozi to yes. be the next president. Mm. That has been his song, mm. which has earned him being a minister, who has now asked the CDF mm. <laughs> and, and his brother, the, the commander in chief, to now release new people so that they come and help uh, uh, the, the politics, you see. Mm. So all of this is nothing but family rule and how it sustains itself. You, you've hinted on it. Um, and, and really it's shameful, you yes. know. First of all, this Ruta Ferdinand mm. is not a soldier. Yes. What is he doing in the UPDF prisons? Even if he was putting on a beret or whatever. And there is evidence to suggest he wasn't. He was actually, because everything was you taped, see, even he was if, on video. Even if he was putting on a beret, mm. try him. And in the civilian courts, there is nothing that stops him being tried in the civilian courts. He's a civilian. Mm. Try him in the civilian courts. You know? But all of this, you know, trying to you know, take civilians into the court martial mm. is to get them away into their dungeons that they control fully. Because the, 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 the chairman of the military court martial mm. uh, is a deployment by, uh, by Mr. Museveni. He's the one who sends. So if he's the complainant, he is the judge. <laughs> How can you have justice? You know, and, 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 and so it's really sad, you know, to see a person like this, Ferdinand, mm. he will never work for himself even if he, he gets bail because he is ever mm. reporting to the military court. It, this is abuse of power, abuse of the institution of UPDF, and uh, I don't expect that. Uh, General uh, Muhozi will, will do anything about this because this is part of the... Unless, of course, he... Th that is the photo of Luther Ferdinand, as you can see, uh, when he was uh, being arrested even before. You can look... He's the one on the ground. He, no, he's, the, he's hitting... A, um, a, 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 um, it's like a doll that shows President Museveni. Oh, okay, an, okay, a, okay. A, a, he's the effigy. one with the megaphone. Yes, an effigy of President Museveni and trying to say this person has been corrupt and trying to hit that effigy of President so Museveni. So his real crime is demonstrating against corruption. <laughs> Because you can see there is no beret anywhere. Th actually. That was his real crime. He was demonstrating against corruption. By beating the effigy of, of, mm, of President if of whoever it was, like that. <laughs> you know. So yeah. uh, you know, the family rule, yes, sir, is a cancer that a terrible cancer that affects our country. Mm. Okay, it, and we must excise it mm. and save the country. There is something you hinted on that um, the, the, the embodies when they are leave command, they are given a certain ministry. And this is the case. There is a militarization of Ugandan system. Um, the permanent secretaries. Now you go to the Ministry of Internal Affairs, starting from the head, 
is a soldier, permanent secretary is a soldier, deputy state minister is a soldier. Literally, there is a way the system has been militarized. Is this a way, is there a way this contributes to the sustenance of uh, this government and maybe the Muhozi agenda? What do you think? Absolutely. This is what I'm How saying. So? so, first of all, of course, uh, people who are no longer useful in the military service mm. or who are simply no longer trusted yeah. but have uh, very important positions. They have high ranks. Mm. They have uh, uh, influence within the military. Uh, part of the way of managing them is taking them out of the military into other other areas. So partly it's uh, cleaning up those they don't want in the military. It's not just looking for control where they take them. Oh. It's not only looking for control where they take them. It's also cleansing the military of those that they are not comfortable with. Oh, okay. And deploying them into areas that are not, uh, you know, but maintaining a control on them, you know, you are Katumba, you were the CDF. They are maybe not comfortable with you being CDF, but they don't want to retire you in the case you turn out to be like the troublesome messages. So in order to keep control on you, you remain a serving officer who can be taken to the court martial <laughs> and they take you to a civilian role in violation of the law, of course. Because as I have pointed out, mm. the government of Uganda is an NRM government. No doubt. It's the NRM that formed the government. Mm. So to take a serving officer to serve in the NRM government violates the law violates the constitution, but it's done with uh, impunity uh, and uh, you have nowhere to run. This is what I was telling you. Exactly. So uh, me, I think the clarity of appointing General Mohos in UPDF is, is good for UPDF for everybody to be clear about the command uh, chain. It's clear. Now nobody has to sit in the CDF office while sitting with one buttock. <laughs> Speaking of sitting in that seat, did you realize a few, I think like a month ago, there was power that was extended from the office of the president to the CDF? Uh, the, the, through the uh, UPDF Establishment Act, uh, there is power that was mandated to the office of the CDF. Uh, he can take up some decisions without even the consent of the president and report later. Well, I think the importance of that uh, establishment was uh, overplayed. I don't mm. think that it uh, really has that uh, serious importance. Like I have pointed out to you, mm. uh, Ordinarily, the office of the CDF uh, is a very, very powerful office within the law, um, within the establishment. Mm. All is there is an establishment within the establishment. It is the is the head of the military and all its arms, whether it's uh, the air force, whether it's what is the chief of all the defense forces, air force, marines, what. Uh, 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 Ama, Tirare, or so every 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 person who holds a gun is commanded by the CDF. No, uh, within the military, oh. that is the air force, okay. the land forces, the marine units, uh, the special forces that may be there, uh, like SFC mm. and other groups. All of them are under the chief of defense forces. Of course, he doesn't control the, the police. Saras How are the Saracens and the police here? No, the police is controlled by the Police Act. Okay. 
So the CDF is under the UPDF Act. Mm. The police is controlled by the Police Act and is headed by the IGP. The prisons mm. is headed by the Commissioner General of Prisons mm. under the Prisons Act. Okay. The other groups of Sarasen, those are under civilian, uh, uh, under, uh, you know, those are mm. under the Ministry of Internal Affairs. Mm. Uh, they are licensed. To, but, to, to, to hold guns. What does this speak of the Ugandan people? Because uh, news came and it's business as usual. Nobody has really done anything. Which it's news? The news of the, um, giving Mohozi the position of CDF. What do, did you want Ugandans? How know? can a sitting president give a son such an office and the whole country keeps quiet? But this is what I was telling you that, uh, you know, uh, it's, not the begin it's not the first time it's happening. His wife, with whom he sleeps on the bed, is the minister of, of the most important ministry of, of education, you know. Uh, so uh, his daughter is a senior presidential advisor. He's, uh, uh, in fact, everybody in the family is a, a senior person in the government. Mm. Uh, so the, the nepotism uh, that is uh, uh, displayed uh, is not in question. It mm. cannot be, it could not only be questioned by uh, the CDF, it's, it's all over. The mm. question is, what do you do? There it is, what do you do? Mm. Uh, and there is nothing you can do because parliament is totally taken over. The courts are totally taken over. Uh, uh, even a civil society that would be making noise is uh, increasingly consumed. So this is why the solution, the solution to all this cannot be anything short of a revolution. And that's what Ugandans must focus on, how the population turns the tables and the population must stand the tables. And they, they have every right to do so. This is why we have been focusing the country on yes, Article 3 of the Constitution. Fortunately, uh, I think it was uh, uh, maybe by the intervention of God that the Constituent Assembly created that article in the constitution mm. which talks about when constitutional governance fails yes what happens that is the article that addresses that mm. then the people have been empowered by the constitution to do everything in their power yes to turn the tables that's what article 3 of Uganda's constitution is about. And it's a duty. It's not, it's a duty. It's not a, something that is, uh, you know, uh, just a, a, a responsibility that, uh, you know, as other citizen responsibility. This is a command yeah. of the constitution. So the command of the constitution is to you mm. and every Ugandan to do everything in your power to return Uganda to constitutional governance. Okay, and, and it actually uses the word shall, which is an infallible command. Yeah. Um, let, let, let's first uh, read a couple of messages. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. We are coming to the end of this, this particular discussion. Uh, we have like eight minutes to go. I'll just hear in from Andy Omunyigana. Mm. You said, Dear President Kiza Vesige, hear our voices. We shall overcome at one point. Coleman Taewa, I wish other politicians could learn from Dr. Vesige. Yaga uh, Prof. Yaku Gambira, and he also laughs. Salongo Kamanyire Daniel, Dr. Kiza Vesige, Iyane Unisa, Okuva Ako Oktaguza. Okutaguza Ekwe Kibina, Kiafekia, FDC, Mchfocho Kuda, Natereza, Katichona. Chasa um, Suse. Mujavi David, Jambo Sa, retired Kano. Did you still want to serve in UPDF? Or retired Sergeant Mujabi David, Jingo Eziba, I think 
or retired Sergeant Mujabi David Jingo Eziva in Kasanje Town Council. A novelist Kabal Eric, you are watching also live. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, Ricky Peter Nabende, salute Dr. BCJ. Uh, Daisy G says, these Bushmen who fought in Luero have pain, bec have pain because are not allowed also to lead the country. Museven brings in his family. Mm. He says Mbadi used to come Kasese people since their king was under arrest. After releasing him, don't need him anymore. Uh, Francis Sebrime, uh, Semufu, Scarecrow, he laughs at that. Um, Alma King Ronaldo, thank you so much for watching. So when it comes in the ballot 2026 and you stay in your comfort zones of social media, then it will be useless as well. Tugume uh, Eddie, long live Dr. Kanovi Saje, Namara, uh, and Naris, you're watching, long live uh, Dr. Kano, that is Ivo Twin uh, Pate. I think I'll just um, I'll end with a comment here. Uh, let me see. Um, we need to put everything aside and unite and stop the Rwandan, to see, the Rwandan Hima to see imperialism. That is far-fetched. Uh, Doctor, there's a couple of the messages we have for now. Yeah, again, uh, my gratitude to all those who are tuned in to this program and who are always active in sending in uh, feedback on what uh, what is going on. Um, most of the messages, I think, have been uh, not uh, uh, requiring a response. There was a caller who wanted to know whether mm. I still wanted to be serving in the uh, UPDF. The UPDF. Mm. No, unfortunately not, uh, because uh, I never set out to be um, a career soldier. Mm. I set out to be a career doctor. Yes. <laughs> I was sucked into fighting mm. and uh, soldiering because of the problems the country was in. Yes, sir. Uh, I thought by taking up guns and fighting, we could return the country to democratic governance where people have the power and leaders are their servants. Mm. When we came into government, I started realizing that that was not the case. Mm. That uh, actually we were now being captured also. Mm. Uh, and even the military uh, was being captured and I protested before I left the UPDF I wrote a document some people confused it with what was published mm. the document I wrote about the politics generally which uh, led to my uh, being uh, taken for court martial mm. but the document I, I wrote on the UPDF has never been published uh, it was intended to talk about the mismanagement that was dangerous, which I could see in the military, which touched on how people were being recruited. And I have time and again pointed out that, for example, General Muhozi, the, now the CDF, mm entered the UPDF illegally, not following the law. He's now its CDF, although he came into it illegally. So, and there were many such cases, how people were chosen to be trained while in service, that there was no system mm -hmm. for people to be chosen to be trained, that there was no system for people to be chosen for promotions or even deployments uh, and so on and so forth. And that this was dangerous for a force that you are talking about professionalizing and regularizing. Which is still happening up to Because today. Regular, a regular force mm. depends on regularity of its actions that you know what will happen 
if you have done A, B, C, then this follows. Though that's what regularity means. Either you follow orders, regulations, uh, laws, and commands, and so on, uh, which uh, was uh, observed uh, in total neglect. So, uh, you know, having experienced that, tried to interfere, I mean, to complain about it and uh, failed, I wanted to leave. But I could not leave. I applied to retire, and I could not be retired for, I think, about six, year, uh, about six years. I was held against my will <laughs> to retire from the UPDF. Mm. There, was, there, there have been, uh, again, comments about what will happen in 2026. I think what should happen should happen now. Nobody should think about waiting for 2026 in order to stand up and be counted. The earlier we deal with the, uh, this massive uh, crisis of governance, yes, the better we have a chance of resetting the country uh, with less pain. Okay. The longer we, it takes to end this uh, crisis of state capture, the more painful it will be okay. to reset. Yes, sir. And that's why my clarion call mm. to all of you is please mobilize all those around you. Get them to understand the dire situation in which we are, the state of captivity in which we are. Organize them into a formation that you can join with others to resist. And let us resist now. Article 3 of our Constitution. Thank you for uh, giving us your time as always. Uh, time will never be quite enough to deal with all the issues we would want to deal with. But the fact that our country is in crisis of governance is not in question. What we were discussing here, people who can't be paid their um, mega salaries uh, in spite of, uh, you know, doing work, uh, the poverty that looms all over the country, the joblessness of our young people, the lack of services, you know, healthcare crisis, education crisis, infrastructure crisis of the roads and so on, it is all glaring for everybody to see. It will not change unless we change the whole system. This corruption people are singing about will not end until the whole system is overhauled. Okay. Let's get on with it. Right, thank, thank you very much. Until next week, God bless you. Pleasure is ours, Doctor. Thank you so much, our viewers. I, my name is Edgar Matthew Karanga. It's exactly 2 p.m. I have been uh, with a gentleman called Ali on camera, and of course, Mokose Arnold Anthony is the producer. Thank you so much for watching. We return yet again on Friday, the Interface Show will return in the Luganda version. Thank you so much for tuning in. Happy Easter holidays. God bless you, and God bless Uganda. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk.